It's such a joy and a delight to have you join us for today's broadcast. I trust that today's broadcast will be a blessing to you. Why don't you sit back, relax, and please don't change that channel and let us see what God has to say to us today. Never let that be the reason why you do any good thing that you do. It's interesting the metaphor that Jesus uses for the word of God. He calls it a seed. I don't want what God has for you, but I want all that God has for me. this morning for the kingdom of heaven is like a man traveling to a far country he called his own servants delivered his goods to them so we see that the owner of the goods is this man and the custodian of the goods for a while are these servants say amen somebody to one he gave five talents to another two to another one to each according to his own ability and immediately he went on a journey then the servant who had received the five talents we explained that talent there is uh, the currency that was used at that time to effectuate commerce. And that if this was written in this day, it would be five dollars, five bucks. Then he who had received five bucks went and traded. Somebody say traded. Oh, I can't hear you. Say traded. Say it one more time. Say traded. Mm -hmm. That means he did business with and he uh, uh, effectuated commerce. He negotiated. He interacted he traded he traded he traded he traded trading is imperative for profit you don't put money in the house and not do anything with it and it will grow it don't happen like that i could tell you that if you're going to grow it you have got to trade it say amen somebody that's exactly what this dude did praise the lord so um he uh, traded, and then he got five. I, I made another five talents. Verse 17. Go on to verse. And likewise, he who had received two gained two more also. In other words, the guy who received two did what the guy who, who received five did. Traded and got, the, got similar result. But he who had received one went and dug in the ground and hid his lot's money. And after a long time, time, somebody say time, 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 time. So we understand now that God gives time to give us the opportunity to make profit with the resources that is committed unto our hands. Amen. After a long time, the Lord of those servants came and settled accounts with them. I love, I love this NKJV translation. The original King James said, uh, uh, he reckoned with them. Reckoned, settled accounts. There's a day of reckoning for every one of us. Settled accounts. And let's, let's, let's see what happened as the accounts being settled. So he who received five came and brought five other boxes, saying, the Lord, saying, Lord, 
You gave me five bucks. Look, I've gained five more bucks besides. Look at the Lord's answer. Well done, good and faithful servant. You are faithful over a few things that will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. Well done, good and faithful. I explained the first service that the word good there is not, oh, you were nice. You helped me clean the floor of my house. No, no. The word good here is fruitful. Praise the Lord. Well done, fruitful and faithful servant. Obviously fruitful because he had turned five bucks into ten. Praise the Lord. Fruitful and faithful servant. You were faithful over a few things. I'll make you rule over many things. Enter the joy of the Lord. Let's read on. Let's read on. Verse, verse 22. He that received two talents came and said, Lord, you gave me two bucks. I gave two more besides. Lord said to him, the same celebration, the same affirmation, and the same reward. Well done. Fruitful and faithful servant. Being faithful over a few things, I'll make you rule over many things. Enter into the joy of the Lord. Now, let's see this knucklehead, last dude. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Verse 24. Verse 24. Then he who had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew, I knew you to be a hard man, reaping where you have not sown and guarding where you have not scattered seed. And I was afraid and hid your money in the ground. And look, there you have what is yours. Brought back exactly what God initially gave him the way God gave it to him. Look at what the Lord said. Verse 26, but his Lord answered to him and said, you wicked and lazy servant. The first two, he said, you fruitful and faithful servant. This guy, he said, you wicked and lazy guy. He didn't do no trade, he didn't do no commerce, he didn't do no negotiation, no interaction, nothing. He just hid the resource that, the God, that God initially gave him. God said, you're wicked and lazy. You knew that I reap where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered seed. So you ought to have at least, at least, at least. Somebody say at least. At least, at least. The incredible revelation there. The least place to put money for growth is in the bank. You see, your Bible. That's in your Bible. So don't be surprised if the stock market gives you 15% in one year and your bank is giving you 0.1%. It's in your Bible. God already told you that the least place to put money, the best place to put money is to trade with it, to do business with it. I see it's there. The guy that taught five from ten, you know, got the highest traded. Hello, somebody. The worst place, the least. Well, not the worst. The worst place is to put it under your mattress like this guy. <laughs> or dig it under the ground. At least the bank will give you point one. Put it under your mattress, you're not getting no point, nothing. Point zero, zero, zero. So, so you have auto of depositing my money uh, uh, in, 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 in my bank and my company. I will have at least gain some interest, even if it's point one percent. If you put in stock market, it will give you 15. Praise the Lord. Let's read on. <clears throat> so, it's, so take the money from him. Give it to the guy who has 10. For everyone who has more will be given and he will have abundance. But from him who does not have, even what he has to be taken away and cast the unprofitable. Note that. No profit. Cast the unprofitable servant. Into the outer darkness, they'll be, winning, they'll be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Say amen, somebody. First Corinthians chapter 4, verse 2. First Corinthians chapter 4, verse 2. Thank you, Lord. Moreover, it is required in stewards that one be found faithful. Fruitfulness, 
faithfulness. Lord, help us like only you can. We give you praise and glory. Thank you for who you are and all that you are in Jesus' name. Amen. We said last week that Jesus spent much of his time preaching about money. He did. In our whole curriculum here at Grace International, the only month we spent talking, we earmarked, we earmarked, we earmarked to talk about finances is September. In one year, one out of 12. We are not exactly doing what Jesus did. Because Jesus spoke more about money than yeah. Yeah, great place to clap. Yes, 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 it's important. We always remind ourselves of that, that all life is is a straight line between two dates. I was there April 3rd, 2000, when my daughter was born. I was there October 5th, 2006, when my mother was buried. Both of them came to this world and left this world the same way, naked. Praise the Lord. But in some kind of way, by the time we come to God, he has given every single one of us something. Three servants. Now, it's not the same. Give one five, give one two, give one one. According to their ability. That's why it's stupid for you to be envious of anybody. Because you must understand that what they have, God gives gave and God gave according to their ability and you have no right to question God because if you call him Lord then he, 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 God has all the right to give this one five, to give this one two, to give this one one because God is the owner and you are the servant. I told you once, no good parent gives Children, the same thing. No. You give them the same love, but you individualize their needs. Because their needs are different. Their strengths are different. Their proclivities are different. Praise the Lord. So the one that needs extra lessons to pass ACT, you give them extra lessons. You pay for it. The other one, you don't even have to think about that one. Hello? Same thing with God. So the really only competition I have is myself. Not another person. The Bible says those who measure themselves by themselves and compare themselves with themselves are not wise. That's why I say it all the time. My hero in that story is the guy with two. So he said, God, why did you give me two? You gave, you gave Jack five. How come you gave me two? No. He went to work with the two God gave him. Praise the Lord. So, first of all, understand that every one of us has something. And the something we have is not the same. Some of us were born in America. Some of us came here with green card. Some of us came here with visa. <laughs> Can I break it down to you? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Some of us, they lie as thousands of dollars. When my employees, many of them, they are not registered to vote. I feel like knocking their head. <laughs> because see, I, knew, I knew how I got my citizenship. The day, the day I, I, I naturalized, that's the day I registered. Right there, people register, register me, I'm ready to vote. You see all these people, they just hand over citizens to American citizens. They are not even registered, they don't vote. You can't blame them because it costs them nothing. If only they know what. <laughs> you understand? So don't be mad. Ah, oh God, how come, how come, how come he was just born here and, 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 and I have to deal with immigration? Why me? Why not you? Because you are the one that can handle it. Hello, somebody. He has the right to call the shots. To give one, 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 two, one, five. So that's not the issue. The issue is not what, how you start. The issue is always how you end up. 
The issue is not what you have. The issue is what you do with what you have. Oh God, help me. Help me preach. So, we said the foundation, the basics of financial literacy is to understand that we all don't start out the same. We all don't start out the same. Number one. And number two, none of us own nothing. He told you the owner right there. God. All of us, all we are, are just stewards. Let me say it in a, in a language that will make you understand it better. Servant! That's all we are. Servant. Everything in your hand right now, none of it belongs to you. That's why one day you're going to live without it. It's not too hard to preach. Hello, somebody? I don't have to... That's not like telling you about heaven that you have not seen. This one, you've seen it. We all know, we all know somebody that it happened to. That everything they had, they left. Why? Because it's not their own. It was just under their control for some time. After a long time, reckoning came. So always remember that I don't own anything. I don't own anything. So I have no right to be proud of nothing. Praise the Lord. So that's the basics. Now please note that he, he used money as metaphor for resource. Because what we have is much more than just money. Much more than that. Family, relationship, Home, marriage, health, strength, vitality, insight, wisdom, unusual. Some of us, are, we, we, just, we just have unusual knack for business. The thing that takes other people 10 minutes is 10 seconds we've already seen it. That's, that's God, God giving ability. Praise the Lord. That's all God given resource. You didn't make yourself like that. No, it was highly, highly intelligent. You didn't give yourself that. That's a resource from God. He uses the metaphor of money, but this is all what he's talking about. That every resource you have, you must understand that is what God gave you as the basis to do business. Praise the Lord. Can I go deeper? God's will. God's will. I don't care what anybody told you. I'm, I'm, I'm just telling you the Bible. Please understand the difference between a preacher's opinion and the Bible. Nothing is wrong with opinion. Nothing is wrong with opinion. I became a physician. God certificate. God do license because I was in the way. Not, not, not the thing they taught me in medical school is in the Bible. <laughs> it was opinions based on you know studies and they did this study and did this. just opinions. So I'm not belittling opinion. But please, 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 don't take any man's opinion beyond. <laughs> to think, to think that uh, it is not Ephesians 5.21 dealing with me to agree to such a thing. <laughs> Praise the Lord. We'll have Christmas concert and some people will come and they will draw to do, to do. For three minutes, four minutes, five minutes. You think it's free? <laughs> you ought to be enjoying the thing, clapping, clapping, clapping. When is our He give me all kinds of reasons. Pastor, yeah, he's not just. I'm, I'm, like, I'm like, me too, I can come and drum like that and get $100 now. <laughs> you think I'm in support of that? Submitting one to another. Because for anything to work, there has to be mutual submission. It's why slavery, apartheid, 
Holocaust could not last. Because all those things are based on, on, on the oppressed getting by at the expense of, of the oppressor getting by at the expense of the oppressed. Praise the Lord. So he traded, he did business, he negotiated. And he caused growth, improvement. It is better. The home is better because we talked, we interacted, we negotiated. We allowed the children to talk. The days of you must only listen to what I say, those days are over. That's not scriptural. Sometimes God speaks through our youngest children. Children thrive more when we do more of listening to them than just talking to them. We need to talk to them. We need to talk to them. But you have to listen first. In fact, you cannot help anybody unless you listen to them first. Jesus said, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. People's words show you where they're at. And you cannot take anybody to where they should be if you don't know where they're at. That's why if you enter any hotel, you see on the wall, first thing, you are here. In case of fire emergency, you are here and take here. Because unless you know where you are, you cannot get out. That's why anybody I'm in business with, I have to be willing to listen to. Because I cannot see your heart, but I can hear your words. I know your words is a mirror to your heart. So that's the mirror I need. Oh, that's where you are. Okay. Trade. The mistake we must not make is try to be fruitful at the expense of being faithful. That's greed. Hello, somebody. Or try to be faithful and think fruitfulness doesn't matter. That's wicked and lazy. That's what that last guy did. And for a while, I understood, you know, the Lord called him wicked and lazy. I understood the lazy part. Okay, he wasn't willing to trade. Because I know business involves a lot of work. A lot of interaction. A lot of work. But I, I, I didn't understand wicked. Why are you calling this guy wicked? Okay, you gave him one. Okay, he hid it. He hid it in, in, under his mattress on the ground, whatever. Brought, brought the thing back. You know, I mean, uh, it's lazy, I know. What do you mean wicked? Until I got it. When an apple tree is fruitful and brings forth apple fruit, it does not bring forth apple fruit because the apple tree needs apple to eat. No. It brings forth apple fruit because I need apple to eat. Hello, somebody. God demands, commands, and expects profit, growth, increase, and fruitfulness. Not because of us. Not for selfishness or self aggrandizement No, 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 no. But because there are so many people that need their destinies. Their hungers will be quenched. Their needs will be met. Their destinies will be fulfilled. Because you chose to trade and increase. Always remember that when you feel tired, when you feel weary, and we all do, and you feel like giving up, and you feel, let me just, let me just relax here. Notice, vacation is great, but retirement, no way. Retirement, when we get to heaven. Retired, no. No retirement. I don't care how old you are, God still wants you moving, doing something productive. Praise the Lord. So Christians don't retire, we refire. No such thing as retirement. As a, as a child of God, believe it. It's not, it's not in the Bible. It's retire, Google, concordance, Hebrew, Hebrew. It's not, no retired there. Rest, yes. 
you rest, you come back full force. Because we need you. But you still have life. You still have strength. You still have health. We need you. Praise the Lord. Many destinies are at the mercy of you growing, making profit. Get a sheet of paper. Write that who will be blessed. If you have no money, you come up with one name, Lucifer. Get another sheet of paper and write that who will be blessed. If you have lots of money, come on. Ministries you can help. People you can help. The needy you can help. You can be a blessing to. This is what this is all about. Let me show you the scripture as I close. First Timothy chapter 6. This is the same scripture that Paul had said earlier on. The love of money is the root of all evil. He says the love of money. He didn't say money. He didn't say money. He said the love of it. That's the inappropriate relationship with money. Is the root of all kinds of evil. And I say to you, the lack of money is also the root of all kinds of evil. You cannot be a good father without it. You cannot be a good husband without it. The Bible says he that cannot provide for his house is worse than an infidel. So you cannot have this religious, religious, uh, no, 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 please, please. Now he tells us the purpose. Let's just look at it. First Timothy 6, verse 17 to 19. Please get this. If you get this, you understand what life is about. People who don't know God, they understand this. Christian people who don't understand this. I pray you get this today in Jesus' name. Command those who are rich. I explained to you before, it didn't say, it didn't just say rich in money. It didn't just say rich in money. Now, it's inclusive of rich in money. But whatever you're rich in, rich in talent, rich in grace, rich in insight, rich in brilliance, rich in knowledge, rich in connection, rich in experience. Command those who are rich in this present age not to be proud. Pride is your greatest enemy once you start making profit. Once you start increasing. Pride is your number one enemy. Not trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God. Who gives us what? Oh, I can't hear you. Who gives us what? Oh, so you know, you know God is not against you having materials. You know that. He gives us richly. One transition says lavishly. He gives us rightly all things to enjoy. Now watch verse 18. Let them do good. He's still talking about them that are rich. Let so thankful for the opportunity to be able to come to your home, your office, or wherever it is you're viewing this broadcast. Now, if you don't know Jesus, can I pray with you? Just say this simple prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Come and be my Lord. I receive you today. In Jesus' name, amen. If you've prayed that prayer for the first time, please call to let us know. Our phone number is on the screen. We would love to pray with you. Or if you want us to pray with you concerning anything, we would love to agree with you in prayer. But be kind to go onto our website, call into our church office, let us hear from you. We would love to pray with you. Additionally, if the message has been a blessing to you and you want the message in its entirety for a small donation to the ministry, we will rush the CD or the DVD to you. Call in, let us know, we'll get it down to you. And if you're ever in the Houston area, we would love to have you fellowship with us at Grace International Church. Look forward to seeing you. And remember these words from Romans chapter 5 verse 17, the B part says, And we who have received abundance of grace and the free gift of righteousness shall rule and reign in Christ Jesus. We will be back at this same station at this same time next week to bring you more word from the Lord. We love you. God bless you.